A lot of people have utilized the argument that the first seasons of previous Star Trek shows are historically ill-received as a justification for why Discovery is not being taken well initially and that it will be considered great ultimately. It makes me wonder if those same people have ever seen Star Trek shows before Discovery. I sit back and think of Star Trek Discovery, it strikes me as being the DC of the Trek universe. For those who aren't big Marvel or DC fans, before the MCU became the juggernaut that it is today, it started out with just individual movies of specific heroes. You had your Hulks and your Iron Mans, single off stories. Basically, they were just laying the groundwork. Marvel started at the bottom and worked its way up to the top. When it was apparent how successful those types of movies could be, DC jumped in full throttle. Except, instead of starting at the bottom with individual movies that build a world, they tried to instantly mimic what Marvel was doing today. And I don't think it can be argued which was the better idea. So, too, do we see this happening with Star Trek Discovery. Within the first two hours of the series, the first two episodes, Discovery introduces a war with the Klingons. We have a brand new technology, a brand new mode of travel that has never been seen and lets you go across all borders of the universe. The show is always intense and never does it feel like Discovery lets us take a breath. After the war, we are instantly thrust against a new enemy that is of an angel, new technologies and possibly the origin story of the Borg. And some of it, if not all of it, breaks continuity. And ironically, these first two seasons, we can even tie into my Borg lore series. Fans of my work know that I've spent the last few months doing videos on the Borg. I've only recently completed doing videos on every episode that had the Borg in it, walking through their lore and such. So it was frustrating to see the writers of Discovery might continue to not care about what has been established. Now, granted, it is possible to make the Borg origin story in Discovery work with the continuity of everything that came before. It would just take some precise writing and hoop jumping, but it is possible. But that's not the point, and I doubt they'll do it anyway. The problem is, is that Discovery wanted to have it all versus other series who actually built up to it. Do you really think the best of both worlds would have been worth anything if we didn't have the buildup and reoccurrence of the Borg? If we didn't have that horrific season one introducing these characters and making us actually like them? Do you think in a pale moonlight would have had any impact if we didn't know exactly what Sisko was losing? What if they had started the Dominion War in episode one and by episode five, we have him killing Romulans? Cause that's what Discovery would have done, make no mistake. Discovery didn't and doesn't ramp up. They jump straight into things. When it first began, we didn't know these characters and we didn't care and we barely care now. And because we barely care, it falters. Even the entire first season sounds like a badly written fanfic. Okay, okay, so you have this executive officer and she's even more intelligent than the science officer, but she betrays her captain, committing mutiny. One of the first to ever do so, but it's not mentioned by Spock because, wait for it, wait for it, she's his sister and he was embarrassed. And so she starts a war with the Klingons, but really it's not her fault and she probably would have had no impact no matter what she did. And then she is about to be put in prison, but, 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 a captain sees importance in her and saves her in the most experimental ship Starfleet has. And she helps with a brand new type of drive that uses fungus to travel anywhere in the galaxy. And because of her and the ship, they start winning the war with the Klingons. But then, oh no, they are thrust into the mirror universe. And that captain, that captain that liked her was a mirror universe captain the whole time. And catch this, he was having the sexies with mirror universe her. And he tries to convince her to become evil, but she doesn't and she defeats defeats him. She defeats him with the help of the Terran Empire Empress. Oh yeah, the Mirror Universe is under control by an Empress of the Terran Empire. Go girl power! And so, she saves the Empress from death. But oh no! In the real universe, without Michael and the ship, the Federation has lost the war. So the Empress talks Starfleet Admiralty into blowing up Quonos. But our heroine steps in and says we are Starfleet and stops it all and even talks the Empress into not killing everyone and thus winning the Klingon War. Yeah. See, the problem is, this storyline could have worked. They had the narrative. 
they just didn't have the patience. This story arc should have been spread over two seasons, with both lighthearted get-to-know character episodes and war-weary episodes going on. But then, they couldn't immediately challenge the Expanse or the Orville, so they lowered their standards for the almighty dollar. Now, who is to blame is honestly up for debate. While many people rush to attack the writers, indeed I'm guilty of this sin, I now more question if it isn't the showrunners, or at least the executives. Executives have been the bane of good story writing for Trek throughout the years. I would not be surprised if pressure to get the post-millennial audience to compete with the other shows I mentioned pushed executives to force writers to do what we have here. But all that to say this, I do hope that Discovery finds its way and does actually rise above. People get confused because they think I want it to fail. I don't. I'd love to say that Discovery was like the rest. Horrible first season or two, and then it found its stride. I just don't think we're going to get there if they continue to do this.